Hello and welcome to my garden and the dinosaurs who live there. This is the third video in my July garden tour, which I've split up into smaller chunks so that I don't have a huge monolithic video that um, takes too long and people lose interest in. <laughs> so hopefully you'll be able to you'll be able to um, hang with me in this video because it's um, only showing you a bit of the garden and therefore it's a little bit shorter than it would be if we went round the whole garden in one fell swoop. So we're going to have a look at the the flower beds or the the, the, the border beds uh, in this particular part of the tour. So I hope you enjoy. So I'm standing on the patio. Uh, the deck is behind me, uh, and I'm on the patio. And now I'm looking to the the area that we use mostly for seating. Uh, our new swing seat there with our well, our old swing seat cushion on it, but uh, the new swing seat is fantastic. And Tom and I are out here several times a day, just having a chill and, you know, when we let the chickens out in particular. So, just looking here, so this is just the edge of the, the deck. Oh, there's Colin. Sorry, the edge of the patio, I should say. And here's one of the first beds. Uh, and in this we have just three things. We've got this uh, variegated shrub, we have, oh, we have uh, this hydrangea, which will give me eventually white blooms, but they're, they're green as they are young. And then we have a magnolia. This is Magnolia Susan, which flowered earlier on in the season. I'll ignore the seating area there. <clears throat> and here's another bed that we have, a very large border bed, and it's mostly shrubs in here. That one at the back there is called Burning Bush. We've got some boxes, a few wee herbs here. I've got uh, sage, rosemary, chives, and they're all sort of, well, particularly the tarragon and the, uh, the rosemary and the chives are a bit protected so that the chickens can get some of it, but not all of it. <laughs> There's little gladioli there and some other uh, summer flowering bulbs in that little pot there and then just various shrubs these mostly are evergreen the the burning bush isn't at the back it goes red in the autumn thus its name and then the leaves drop in front we have <laughs> a strange looking and not entirely successful uh, tower where I have some sun some sweet peas in getting some sweet peas but I don't think it likes the location much to be honest and then we've got a nice big tub of gladioli there is a rhododendron in there and there is, uh, is it skimia and choisia various uh, herb, uh, herbs various shrubs you'll find in here at the back you can see the chickens are having a little dust bath <laughs> And some of them are following along. Hello, Matilda. And there's poor Hamble in her state of molting. Oh, looks so sore, doesn't it? Yes, baby. Right. Uh, then we have this New Zealand flax, which is, I don't know, maybe 10 years old now. Uh, also called a formium. Uh, it is very happy where it is. It's taking over quite a lot of space, but that's okay. I have some clematis growing a little bit up this arch, still quite young, so it won't get right over yet. We can see the tail end of one of the flowers there. And if I just come round to here, we can see a nice large hosta, which is a little bit eaten by slugs and snails, but not too bad. 
then Echinops, which are fun looking, sort of architectural and prickly. And this is a perennial Rudbeckia that will be starting to flower in the not too distant future. And this big daisy, I don't know what kind it is, but it's a perennial that comes, well, as, as the name suggests, it comes back every year. And there's bits of that dotted all over the place. It does grow very, very well and take over. The big hosta here that the girls have been having a, a chomp on. And then this perennial, which is one that I can't remember the name of, but we get these lovely tall flowers. And then this annual that's flowering that I grew from seed, but again, I can't remember what it is. And there's also been some aqualegia in the bed, but it's past its flowering now. And there's a little um, bum, 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 bum. You know what that is. I know what that is, and I can't remember what it is. Calendula, that's the one. And then a lovely hookera in there, and it's a lime green one, which of course will stay there over the winter time when a lot of this other stuff dies back. And round this side, another couple of hostas actually. So that's, and, and then there's a fair chunk of, I don't know whether I'm pointing the right direction, sorry, uh, <laughs> fair chunk of this variegated shrub, Acuba maybe, can't quite remember, I think it's Acuba. So that's these two beds, and if we walk down here and through the arch, we've got another, another bed, where we have this Astrantia Moulin Rouge, which is starting to go sort of ready purple. And of course this lovely large Buddleia. And then looking down, this is a foliage of a Simisifuga, I think is the way you pronounce it. And we can see there's a flower, which is just a big sort of tall flower, a uh, spire. And down here, we've got some sedum that's spreading itself out a little bit. And some more aquilegia, still a little bit here, it's this yellow aquilegia. And this is new, it's just come up. I planted some iris bulbs, and you can see this beautiful, or two beautiful irises here. Very striking. Oh, and that bee thinks so too. The poppies, the scarlet poppies are done now, but we still have their amazing looking heads. And then this other Astrantia, whose name I don't know, this white one, is quite happy. And then at the back, it's not in the bed, but it's next to the bed. It's this huge mass of uh, potato palm, uh, and this is potato Picasso. It's a main crop, so I'll be harvesting that and showing you the harvest of that in a video in a few weeks' time. So that's that little bed. And then if I just turn round, doo -doo -doo, again against the wall, the boundary wall, this is actually a, a, a hydrangea that's been crowded out by this shrub. I'd need to dive in there to get you the name of that shrub but it's a very fast growing one and I think I've only had it in mm, five years or so and it's taken over the place but it's good because it, it sort of gives a bit of protection from the outside world <laughs> anti-social me oh we've got some girls in there having a dig about there's another buddleia in here as you can tell And we have some Crocosmia. It's just a bit too shaded, I think. That's why they're sort of leaning as they do, but I don't have the heart to dig them out. 
I don't really have anywhere, anywhere else for them. We can see more of the Budley. I didn't even realise I had a Budley in the back there, but I do. There you go. All a bit crowded. And then we have this Azalea, which I absolutely cut back like mad because it was just getting annihilated every year by black fly and farm the black fly were getting farmed by ants and it was either just take it out completely or chop it back and see if it, it would help so i didn't get any flowers this year but um i'm not also getting any black fly i don't think so hopefully uh maybe get some flowers next year these darned daisies are just self-seeding all over the place now they are very pretty but they're sort of flopping over as you can see this wasn't the original location of them, but uh, they sure as are uh, enjoying moving around the garden. <laughs> and something else that likes doing that is this purple uh, perennial geranium, which is beautiful, but again, it is just so prolific and it gets all over the place. In fact, there you go, there's some there. So down in the corner here, it's uh, all going a bit crazy. So we've got some Simisifuga in there again. We've got some hostas, but these hostas never fare very well. These are the next ones to be dug out and taken out to the front woodland area because they are chomped to kingdom come. We also have quite a lot of ferns. You can see there's quite a lot of ferns in the back there, as well as some nice ivy. And then we've got some brambles there that I need to chop back. And then there's a heart, heart's tongue fern here, which is quite happy. And then this beautiful uh, Brunnera Jack Frost. It's no longer flowering, but the, the leaf color and shape is beautiful, I think. And then more of these Echinops. And if I just look behind me, I've got another little bed here, which has got this huge mahas, mahusif mahonia, which has done its thing really for the year. We've had the flowers, we've had the berries, and it's now just statuesque. And this bed had some uh, aquilegia flowering but actually it's mostly used for these uh, primroses which are just sort of biding their time until the winter again and then we've got this oh look at this cleavers and then we've just got this little uh, shrub whose name escapes me I'll need to get chop chop chopping and get my border privet trimmed and if you have a look here that's the path and that's some of the Picasso potatoes flopping over I have had a bit of a feel and oh no look I have got a challenge because I didn't top this up enough look <coughs> I'm gonna have to take those there's a couple of potatoes right off oh that's got a munch And there's another one there. Ooh. Damn. Okay, they're now officially harvested. I don't know what to do with this. It needs the water, that's for sure. I'll maybe see if I can put some more compost on that, because it's got another few weeks before I really want to be harvesting this. That's what I'm going to do, because I don't want the potatoes to be uh, go green because of the, the light. So, yes, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put some more compost on top of that just to mulch it anyhow I think that's me for this part of the garden tour so a bit of a look around the the borders mostly shrubs but some flowers and the odd bit of veg here and there so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give me a thumbs up I'd love to hear your comments and um, I'll talk to you again very very soon thanks for watching bye for now